And I think also to this, we have additional therapies, sort of knee adjuvant therapies as well that we are doing, including therapies with um, oncolytic viruses mm -hmm. that we're injecting. And one of those studies uh, is using uh, telemogen lohoperepec, also known as TVEC. And TVEC has been shown, and again, in a randomized study, uh, to be uh, beneficial for patients with unresectable melanoma, specifically patients that have this early disease, that have the intransient lesions or have lymph node metastases, or stage 4 M1A, which is distant lymph nodes or distant subcutaneous metastases. So in that study, patients who were treated with TVEC had a 59% uh, lower risk of developing distant disease to lungs, liver, and other areas compared to the control arm, which was GMCSF. Again, leading us to believe that some of these oncolytic immunotherapies may be able to be used in this early setting uh, of patients to try to prevent them from developing recurrence and distant disease. Now, that was in unresectable patients. So we are now taking this to patients that have resectable disease and asking the same question. Can we then treat these patients with TVEC for three months and then do surgery versus doing surgery up front? And do we see a difference then in the risk of recurrence for these patients? Again, we don't know the answer to that, and this is done in the clinical trial. And I really want to emphasize that all of this is really should be done under clinical trials um, in order to get appropriate data and, and be able to follow these patients uh, appropriately. Yeah. But I think it's a, it is very exciting though for us in melanoma that we now have therapies that we can take early on and really use in the setting for these patients that have a very high risk of recurrence of their disease. So now the question then becomes, Georgina, with this then, if you have these patients that you treat in, on your clinical trial with a BRF MEC combination and they have a complete response. Do we have, still have to do surgery for these patients? Absolutely, it's a clinical trial and without the pathological assessment, we can't actually say whether they've had a pathological complete response and that is the end point of interest. And we know from the metastatic setting that patients who undergo a complete response there do better long term. So we need to assess this and get the data around that. So yep, they, they must go on to have their surgery, even if there's uh, nothing to see radi radiologically, uh, so that we can see the microenvironment and get a full assessment pathologically. Uh, and in terms of treatment beyond the surgery, just for equipoise with the current clinical trials or the clinical trials that have been open and now closed, we continue treatment for 12 months. Yeah. I guess, and, uh, and I guess that's also sort of something that we need to determine as well, the need of that additional therapy, that mm -hmm. adjuvant therapy, again, through clinical trials. I think that the advantage, though, of neoadjuvant therapy such as this on a clinical trial is that we really gives us the opportunity to study the effect on the tumor, on the immune system, on the tumor microenvironment that these drugs have, and probably for us to gain a better understanding that we sometimes can do in patients with stage four metastatic yeah. disease. And I think that this is really will help us not only in these patients with stage 3 disease that we're treating, but also later on patients with stage 4 disease as well. Yeah.